The college football playoff rankings debut this Tuesday. The committee is going to give you their thoughts and their opinions on where things stand for this college football playoff race. We appreciate that. We're not going to wait till Tuesday. We're going to give you our top six right now. So our first two out and our top four. This is not a prediction of the college football playoff. This is not a prediction of where the committee is going to rank these teams. This is our opinion on these teams as it stands right now. We're taking into account this season, yes, but we're also just looking at this thing from an overall just football perspective, how they match up, where things stand, and uh, we'll get into it right now. But first things first, make sure you subscribe right here. College football, only college football, every single day of the week is this show, The Hard Count Live, three times a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern. Do not miss a show. We want you all a part of this. There's no agendas. There's no hot takes. There's nothing extra added and no high fructose corn syrup. That's bad for you. Just ball and only ball every single day of the year. We appreciate y'all rocking with us in advance. Follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at JD Pacquel. All right. At number six, I got the Oregon Ducks. And I know they lost to Washington. I understand that. I understand they have a loss. But even so, man, the statement they made against Utah, I think that's going to be hard for a lot of people to forget. I think Oregon's going to play their very best ball in November. I think their best ball is still out there to be real. And they have experience at quarterback. They have line of scrimmage play that I think is second to none in that conference. And they're probably a top five line of scrimmage team, I think, in the country. Number one in yards per carry is Oregon. They are rolling right now. And the way that Bo Nix is operating that offense, the way that defense is attacking, they're going to be a problem the rest of the way. Still some big games left on the schedule, but it feels like the way they handled Utah at Utah, a place Utah doesn't lose, very big statement. Clinic kind of game for Oregon. So they're number six for us this week. If they handle business, I think they'll see the number five team in the Pac-12 championship. And if they beat that team, I think they'll find themselves in the dance, even with one loss as a one-loss Pac-12 champ. Now, the Pac-12, man, like I said, they're just throwing a party before they turn the lights out. They are they are throwing a rager before they sell the house that is the Pac-12, in my humble opinion. And Washington, at number five, undefeated. They are so potent with Michael Penix Jr. playing quarterback. Like, th- there's some things in my mind that I think they still have to clean up defensively, and they've been in a couple dogfights because of you know the offense having an off day against Arizona State and the defense having some issues against Stanford. doesn't matter. I'm not calling Washington fraudulent because they had a couple of close games. At the end of the day, with the NFL wide receivers they have, most notably Roma Dunze, they're going to be able to play on the perimeter against, you would imagine, everybody in the country because of the number of weapons they have. They can spread you out. If you want to double one guy, somebody else is probably getting open with one-on-one coverage, and Michael Penix Jr. is going to make you pay. So the matchups that they're able to create and the pace at which they can play, of which, hey, we're, we're going to score 40, try and catch us. If you can't keep pace, sorry about it. They're so explosive offensively. For me, the number five team this week when it comes to our college football playoff rankings. Now, into the top four. Again, I think the college football playoff committee will see this top four differently, and we'll talk about that here in a second. Number four, I have Florida State. Florida State, strong resume. If you want to talk about resumes and what they've done this year, the Clemson win is aging poorly, to be real. But I think the way in which they got it and the spot in which they got it probably means something in my mind. Uh, The game against LSU, that win is aging well. Florida State, they're undefeated. Like, say what you want. Men lie, women lie. Numbers Numbers don't lie. Records don't lie. And the way that Jordan Travis is operating right now within this offense, similar to Washington, the matchups they can create in the pass game, if they get the run game going, they're going to be unstoppable offensively. And they're already really good. When the run game finds its stride and that defense can kind of get a better push up front, it's a big if, uh, I think they're going to be right there in the mix. Trending right now to play for the ACC title. You would imagine when they get there, when and if they get there, they'll be favored to win the ACC. Undefeated, Florida State, if they finish that way, they'll be in the college football playoff emphatically, in every sense of the word, control their own destiny. Florida State, number four for us this week in the college football playoff rankings. Now, at number three, I got Ohio State. Now, before before we get into this conversation around Ohio State and what they did this year and all that, like I think when the committee comes out with their rankings, they will have Ohio State at number one in the country. And Ohio State, it doesn't look how we've seen it look in past years. They're not scoring 40 a game. They don't have, at this point in time, a Heisman Trophy finalist kind of quarterback in common court. But they have the best player in college football 
and Marvin Harrison Jr. I thought about talking about some other players there, but like I think if Marvin Harrison Jr. had a QB next to his name instead of wide receiver, he's probably the runaway Heisman guy at this point. Like what he means to that offense, the extra level of explosiveness he gives them, and Travion Henderson now coming back into the fold and being able to run the football well, it gives that offense a little bit more oomph to it. Obviously, Marvin Harrison Jr. already supplies a lot of that oomph, but defensively, they went from being conversational to being fluent in that Jim Knowles defense. It went from, we kind of know what to do, we know our assignment, but we kind of have to think about it, to now think, read, react, ball. Like that, that's what, it, there's no more like processing. It's like, we know what to do. We get to just play football now. They have dudes defensively and the formula for Ohio State, quite frankly, is that of an SEC team. We're going to squeeze the life out of you defensively. Offense, get your points where you can. Offense, get your points how you get them. Marvin Harrison Jr., Mr. You Can't Guard Me is going to get his and that's how we'll live for Ohio State. Best resume in the country. Win at Notre Dame. The win over Penn State. Those both, I believe, will continue to age well. And Ohio State, I think, will be number one in the college football playoff rankings this upcoming week. But for us right now, I still want to see more from Kyle McCord. That's not throwing shade at the Buckeyes. I just think right now I'm going to keep him at number three. If they keep handling business, obviously it's going to come down to the game against Michigan if Michigan handles business. And... It'll be same song, third verse, if you will. Marvin Harrison Jr. also probably some highs and implications when it comes to that game. Now at number two, just talked about him, Michigan Wolverines. They were off this week. I have no reason to drop them. We understand this. We say it every single week. Their games at the end of November will define their season. Everyone's saying they haven't played anybody. I get that. I understand. You still got to play ball when you're out there. You still got to look how you're supposed to look. And Michigan, to be clear, has been the most dominant team in the country. Defensively, yes. Offensively, I see a new gear. I've talked about it on this show a lot. J.J. McCarthy, the way that he is evolving, the way that he is taking ownership of this offense, and the way he's pushing the ball downfield more, and the way they're able to do that effectively and consistently, I don't care who it's against. You still got to make the open shots. Michigan will be right there in that conversation. Again, I expect it to come down to that game against Ohio State in Ann Arbor. That'll be a movie. I can't wait to watch it, but Michigan right now, it's hard to argue with their resume. Is it the best competition at this point in the country? No. Is that 100% Michigan's fault that the teams they're playing in the Big Ten aren't bringing it to the nth degree? No. So that game at Penn State will tell us a lot, but Michigan, for me, number two team in the country, most dominant. No other conversation about it. At number one, I got Georgia. And if you have Michigan at one, I'm not pushing back too, too much, but I have Georgia at one for the simple fact that, in my opinion, they are the best matchup team in the country. Meaning you line it up 11 on 11, our guys versus your guys, you better have something up your sleeve to give you an edge because your personnel ain't going to be it. And I feel pretty confident saying that about Georgia week in and week out until maybe they play Marvin Harrison Jr. for a second time if we get that matchup. Like maybe that's the only matchup where you're like, "Uh, I don't know if I like Georgia in that one quite as much. But the way they're operating right now, in perfect Kirby Smart kind of fashion, trending to play their very best football in November. Got some big ones now. You got Missouri, you got Ole Miss, you got Tennessee still on the docket. So they're going to need to play their best football. But Carson Beck, y'all, we better put some respect on Carson Beck's name, man. So much talk around these other quarterbacks that deserve it, to be real with y'all. But Carson Beck, he doesn't do it in the most flashy way. He doesn't have the no-look Pat Mahomes back across the body throw. He's not putting up like 500 yards passing in a game. But you know what he does? Goes out there, runs the offense, does his job, and he's elevated his play to this point in that one game against Florida. I say to this point, elevated his play without Brock Bowers is my point there. The way that he operates this machine. Kirby Smart said it. There's things that he does even behind the scenes that we don't talk about because they don't show up in the box score. And he's, you know, he's not getting credit for checking out of a pass to a run or checking the protection. But the way that he keeps this whole operation operating at maximum efficiency deserves a ton of credit. And I think he's a reason why you believe Georgia has championship level chops. Yes, the defense has 70% of that production back. The defense, I think, is one of the most sure things in the country at this point. Unless you scheme them up and you have something dialed up that they're not ready for and they don't adjust at all the entire game, maybe you get them that way. But Georgia offensively, with the way they're running the ball downhill now with Dejan Edwards, 
the way that other weapons have stepped up to this point. Again, in that one game sample size against Florida, the way that Carson Beck is just dialed in, going the right place with the football, making all the right throws. Georgia going to be a problem now the rest of the way. And for me, still the best team in the country. The organization, I think, is why you say that about Georgia. So to recap it for you, first two out, we got Oregon at six, Washington at five. Expect one of those to find their way into the college football playoff if it's a conference champion, potentially with one loss, or if Washington goes undefeated and finds their way into the college football playoff. Pac-12 is so good this year. First two out right there. Florida State at four, handling business, still undefeated, control their own destiny. If they go wire to wire, they will be in the dance. Ohio State at three. Again, I expect them to be number one when these first rankings come out. Just my feel on it based on their resume, their new formula is firing on all cylinders. Kyle McCord elevating his game will be that differentiator for them when it comes to November. Michigan, most dominant team in the country. Again, if you have them at one, I don't have a strong case against it. I have Georgia at one because of the way they win matchups and the way they're playing their best football and the way that, quite frankly, I'm not betting against Kirby Smart and the way they've developed that roster over the course of his time there. So those are our college football playoff rankings. Can't wait to hear y'all's thoughts. Again, follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at JD Paquel. Let me know. Tweet at me, DM me, whatever you want to do. Let me know your college football playoff rankings as we sit here on Sunday. Excited to hear your thoughts. Most importantly, though, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a minute of what we got going on here on the On3 YouTube channel and on the Hard Count. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. We're going to keep this party rolling. We will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of the Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.